Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make homemade sauerkraut. I love homemade sauerkraut. If you're not a fan of the store-bought stuff, I highly recommend trying to make it yourself and making homemade sauerkraut because it just tastes better, it's crunchier, it's fresher, and you know that you're gonna be getting all those beneficial live probiotics and enzymes that make sauerkraut such a healthy food because you know exactly what you're gonna put in it and you can use the highest quality ingredients. Sauerkraut is so healthy for you. You're gonna get those live probiotics that are gonna help your gut. So that's gonna help boost your immune system. It's gonna help with digestion. And it's rich in vitamins like vitamin C, your B vitamins, vitamin K, and lots of minerals as well. So it's a really great food to add into your diet. So I'm gonna quit rambling and get on with the video. And I hope you enjoy the video and try this out yourself. To make sauerkraut, you can either make it in a fermenting crock or a mason jar with an airlock top. If you're making it in mason jars, you can find some really great fermenting kits online. I purchased this fermenting kit a while ago from Mason Tops, so it has these pickle pipes, which are self-venting lids that allow the gases to vent out without allowing oxygen or contaminants inside your ferment. It includes glass weights, and it also has this pickle packer vegetable tamper, which helps pack your sauerkraut down. I do, however, prefer using the actual sauerkraut crock. So now moving on to the ingredients, there are two basic ingredients for traditional sauerkraut, cabbage and salt. However, with the sauerkraut I'm making today, I'm adding in a few extra ingredients just for some extra flavor and nutrition. So I'm gonna be putting in three large heads of red cabbage, one celery root, one carrot, salt, and some bay leaves, but this is totally optional. So now we can prep our ingredients. When choosing your cabbage, your heads of cabbage should be firm and compact with shiny crisp leaves. You can use green cabbage, red cabbage, or a combination of both. My seven quart fermenting crock holds about four medium sized heads of cabbage or three large. I start by peeling off and discarding the very outer layers that don't look very nice or have had people touching them. And then reserve a few outer leaves of your cabbage to use later as a primary follower. And then cut your cabbage really thin using a sharp knife, mandolin, or food processor. And then do the same with the rest of your vegetables. Now you just need a large bowl to massage your cabbage in. My fermenting crock is 7 quarts, so I actually use the crock from my slow cooker, which is around 7 quarts. This works perfectly for me, but if you don't have that, just use a big bowl. Now you want to measure out approximately 1 tablespoon of salt for every head of cabbage you're using and set that aside. So place your cabbage in a mixing bowl and then sprinkle only about half the salt you reserved earlier on top. And massage that cabbage and salt mixture with your hands. Really get in there and just massage it for a few minutes. And it shouldn't take long for the cabbage to start looking limp and wet. And then just cover it and set it aside for about 30 to 45 minutes. And during this resting time, the salt is going to help pull some of the juices out of the cabbage, making it easier to massage and create a brine. If you find you're having trouble creating a brine, taste your cabbage. And if it doesn't taste salty, add a little bit more salt and this will help pull more of the liquid from your cabbage. Just keep massaging, letting it rest and repeat until you've got a good amount of brine in the bottom of your bowl. Some people say that if you can't make enough brine, you can just top it off with some water, but I do not recommend doing that because that can lead to discoloration and a soggy sauerkraut, and we don't want that. You want your sauerkraut to taste fresh with just a hint of saltiness, so now's the time to perfect the cabbage to salt ratio. So just taste your cabbage, and if it doesn't taste salty enough, add a little bit more, and just keep doing this until you get the flavor you desire. 
Now it's time to transfer your cabbage to your crock or your jars. Just add a little bit at a time and pack it down with either your fist or your vegetable tamper. This is going to help remove any air pockets and also create more brine. While you're pressing, you should see the brine rise above the cabbage and don't worry if it disappears between pressings. And if you're not really seeing much brine when pressing it, you're going to need to return the cabbage to your bowl and just massage it for a bit longer. And just remember, when filling your crock or jars, keep in mind that you want to only fill them approximately two-thirds full to allow space between the top of the brine and the top of your crock pot. This space is needed for the expansion of your sauerkraut. If you don't allow this headspace, your sauerkraut will expand and overflow. So as a rule of thumb, you should allow four inches for a crock or two to three inches for jars. And now you can just top your cabbage with a few of those whole cabbage leaves you reserved earlier. These leaves are referred to as a primary follower that keep your shredded cabbage from floating above the brine. And then you're going to top with a secondary follower, which are your weights. A fermenting crock usually comes with a set of ceramic weights, and you can buy some glass weights for your jars online. Now for the crock, I create a seal by pouring a bit of water around the lid and the water just keeps it airtight but also allows the gases to get out when it burps. And it's really cool because after a while you can actually hear the ferment burping and it's kind of cute. So once you have it all prepared, you can just place your crock in a baking dish. I like to just use a glass pie pan. This is just in case it spills. It's critical that for the first 72 hours, the lid stays on. So after 72 hours, you can take the lid off and check on it. I'll usually allow it to ferment for a few weeks, and then I'll test a little bit and see how it is. Once it's done fermenting, I transfer it from my crock into some glass jars. So I just put some of the sauerkraut in the jar and then really pack it down. Keep the cabbage under the brine because that's going to prevent mold. And then after I do that, I just store it in the refrigerator to slow down the fermentation. And it's ready to enjoy. I hope you try this out yourself, it's pretty fun. Happy fermenting, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!